just continue for a few more minutes in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, you are so worthy of praise. You are worthy of our worship and our honor. Jesus, we recognize you today. We recognize you in our hearts. We recognize the price that you paid, the victory that you have, the victory that you have that you have shared with us and you have brought to us. Today, we thank you. We praise you, Jesus. We love you. We honor you. We lift you up. You are the name above all names. In your name, there is victory, Jesus. Thank you so much for your presence. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to us, your grace, your love. We honor you and we worship you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's another great day to come into the presence of God, to spend time with the Lord, to worship, to lift his name, to put his name in the rightful place above all things. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys all at home for worshiping with us. And we just ask that you would just continue to engage your hearts as we open the word of God today. Thank you guys for leading us into worship. Amen. Amen. I just so appreciate the presence of God. We can come and be in his presence. Hope that you guys at home, uh, wherever you are, gathering with your small groups, with your family, by yourself, watching on your phone or on your computer or wherever you are, that you're enjoying the presence of God as well. And before we just get into the word of God today, I just want to encourage you guys, if you don't have a small group, Obviously, we can't, with the situations that are going on right now in the world, we can't get together as we love to do at church and worship together and praise the Lord together in big groups. But we can still get together in small groups. And the Bible says, where two or three are gathered together, Jesus is there in the midst of us. And so we want to encourage you guys to, to meet together in small groups. If you don't have a small group, contact our office uh, there's lots of small groups all over the city, in different parts, different places, different ages of groups, different types of groups, and we want to find one that connects well with you so that you can connect well with others. Also, we want to encourage you guys to continue to stay connected with our uh, Facebook page on, uh, on Facebook as well, because with this uh, virus that's going around, things are changing almost on a daily basis. We have new information, new things are happening, things are changing. And so in order for us to get the information to you, please look at our Facebook page on a regular basis so we can stay connected and you guys can get the most up-to-date information. Also, on that Facebook page, if you guys have any prayer requests or if you have anything that you uh, need to contact with our office or church staff or pastoral staff, we want to encourage you guys to send us a private message if you need prayer or maybe you need to talk to somebody, some counseling issues or things like that. We're always ready and available to, to talk to you guys. There's a, a large pastoral staff and we'd love to connect with you as well. Finally, on, through our Facebook page and through different ways, uh, you can also continue to give of your tithes and offerings so that the blessing of God can continue to pour out onto your home and to your family. There are several ways to do that. Uh, we have ABA, we have uh, Cambodia Public Bank, we also have a, uh, a Salida, and, uh, or you can uh, bring your tithes and offerings to our offices. We're open still Monday through Friday. You can bring it to our finance department. So those are just a few of the ongoing announcements, things that are still continuing, but we just want to encourage you guys, please stay connected with us. Please stay connected with, with our church and stay connected with other um, uh, small groups and family and friends in that as well. Well, today is Easter Sunday. It's the day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. It's a good thing Jesus died on the cross for our sins, took our punishment, 
by his stripes we were healed, but he didn't stay dead. Put his body in the tomb. Three days later, he rose from the dead in victory. Victory, not only victory over our sins, but victory over death as well. And so now, because of his resurrection, we can receive that resurrection life. And that's what we celebrate. That's what we celebrate on Easter. That's what we celebrate on Resurrection Sunday. And just all the songs that we sang today, just so amazing to us to remember our Jesus, our King, our Lord, the victorious one who went before us, who prepared the way, who prepared victory and led us in his victory so that we can have a victorious life as well. Today, I want to read a few things from the scriptures. And I just want us to go back to that weekend over 2,000 years ago. And I just want you to put yourself in the position of one of Jesus' disciples on that weekend. Maybe you think, oh, maybe I was Peter, or maybe I was John, or maybe I was James, or one of the other disciples. But just put yourself in the shoes or the sandals of one of Jesus' disciples. And think about how you would feel on those days. And what I want to focus on is the in-between, the in-between days. Okay, there was the, the, the crucifixion when Jesus went to the cross, when he, was, when he was whipped, when he was beaten, when they put the crown of thorns upon his head. Then he died, breathed his last breath. They put his body in the tomb, closed it up with, this, with, a, with a stone. And then what happened to the disciples? What happened in those days between the time when Jesus was crucified and when he rose again? First of all, I want to read something from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53. This is a prophecy of Isaiah that he was prophesying about Jesus. And this was many hundreds of years before Jesus was crucified. But listen to the words that Isaiah said. This is speaking directly about Jesus. He was despised and rejected by men. He was talking about Jesus. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, but we esteemed him not. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that, bef that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. This is what Jesus did for us. He was the lamb. They prophesied about Jesus. The lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But in saying that, they were saying he's the lamb who will, be, who will be slaughtered. Who will be killed for the sin and for the iniquity of all mankind. And that's what happened on that night when he went to the cross. He was wounded. He was beaten. His blood was shed, but the Bible says that it was shed for us. By his wounds, we are healed. By his stripes, we have freedom, we have deliverance, we have healing. But it's because of what happened to Jesus. And he paid that price for each one of us. He paid that price for me. He paid that price for you. He paid that price for each and every one of us. He willingly went to the cross 
for us. I want to talk about that time in between the cross and the resurrection. Let's read, let's look in Matthew chapter 28. I want you to see what is happening in the disciples' hearts after Jesus was put in the tomb and before he was raised from the dead. Listen to this. This is after, after Mary went to the tomb, after they went to the tomb and they saw that the, the tomb was empty. But I want you to hear a few things in here. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. And they ran to tell his disciples, Behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took a hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. So they were fearful. They were afraid. But Jesus said, Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Okay? And then later on in Matthew chapter 28, it says, it says, The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. So there was fear, okay? And there was doubt among the disciples, okay? This is in, Math in Mark chapter 16. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go, tell his disciples and Peter that Jesus is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment. So they doubted. They were afraid. They were full of fear. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Okay? Later on in Mark 16. Okay? After these things, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Okay? So we see a common theme going on with the disciples during that time. There was fear. There was doubt. There was... One of, the, one of the verses here said they were trembling. They were so afraid. Okay? Listen to what John says. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors were locked where the disciples were. So the disciples were in a room. They were in a house. And they locked the doors because they were, it says here, they, the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. They, some of the disciples are probably thinking, yeah, they took Jesus away. They took him. They killed him. They know that we're his disciples. So we better lock the doors. We better hide because if those Jews come get us, we're going to have the same fate as Jesus. So they were afraid. They were not sure what was going to happen. Later on in John 20, eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, why were the doors locked? Because they were afraid. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. So Jesus came to them, and the first words that he said were peace. Peace. Why? Because they were full of fear. They were afraid, they were trembling, they were doubting. But Jesus, the first thing Jesus said when he met them, peace, peace. Then he said to Thomas, Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So this is kind of the situation that was going on with the disciples after Jesus was uh, put in the tomb, after he was crucified. They put him his body in the tomb. And even after he was raised again, or raised back to life, they were hiding. They were locking the doors. They said, oh, we got to hide out. We got to 
take care of ourselves. We, we're, we're afraid. We're full of fear. We're doubting. But Jesus came and he said, peace, peace. Sometimes we have situations in our lives where we need peace. We need to have hope. But in the in-between times, between the beginning of the problem and the answer to the problem, is when we need to hold on to hope the most. We need to hold on to hope with all that we have. The Bible is a good book. It's a really good book. But there's a lot of things in the Bible that aren't easy to do. There's a lot of things in the Bible that aren't easy to do. For example, Jesus tells us to love. Okay, But let's think about love for a minute. Jesus said, yeah, it's easy to love those who love you, but Jesus' command to his disciples were, love your enemies and bless those who persecute you. So, so Jesus is basically saying, love is good, but true love is loving when someone doesn't love you back. True love is loving somebody when someone doesn't love you back. The Bible also says things like, the greatest in the kingdom of God will be the servant of all. And as Christians, a lot of times we're, yeah, okay, it's good. We need to serve the Lord. We need to serve in the house of God. And, and that's all good and everything. But what happens when someone starts to treat you like a servant? How do people treat a servant? They don't normally thank a servant for doing their job. They don't say, oh, thank you for, you know, cooking dinner or doing this or doing that. They don't, you don't normally thank a servant. In fact, there's even a passage in the Bible where, God, where, where they're talking about a slave, and they said, when, a, when you have a slave and they come in from working, the slave doesn't just kind of sit down and, you know, relax or whatever. No, they get up and they, and they prepare the meal and they get everything ready. A servant, a servant of all, is someone who does things and doesn't usually get a thank you from people. What happens when people treat you like a servant? And think about all of the other um, fruit of the Spirit as well, of love, joy. Okay, let's talk about joy. Joy is good when everything's happy and fine and, you know, you're having a great time with this and that. But what about when it's hard to have joy, when you're in a joyless situation, when there's not much to have joy about, can you still have joy? Well, that is true joy. And the Bible always talks about having joy or peace or all of those things in the middle of, for example, if we're talking about joy, having joy in a joyless situation, having peace when there's turmoil all around you. That's true peace. True joy is having joy when everything's not happy. Can you still have joy? So the Bible talks about difficult things. And for the disciples on those days, it was hard for them to have hope. They were in the in-between, the time where Jesus was not yet risen from the dead. They were still waiting for the promise. They were still waiting. Maybe they were starting to doubt the promises. Maybe they were starting to question, oh, was Jesus really the Son of God? Is he, was he really going to be resurrected from the dead? If you are having a difficult situation, or maybe this whole thing that's going on in the world is causing you to lose your hope a little bit, lose your joy a little bit, this is the in-between time. This is the in-between time where things are difficult, but the not yet, the, 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 the promise, 
the fulfillment, the, the end of something has not yet happened. So we're in the in-between, we're in the not yet. With this whole thing, with this virus that's going on all around the world, maybe, I know there's some of you guys out there who are having problems with your finances, or you're doubting about this, you're not sure what the future is going to hold, you can't do this and you can't do that. And sometimes it starts to shake our lives a little bit. Sometimes doubt starts to come in. Like Thomas, the doubts were there. And Thomas said, if only I can touch. Sometimes we think, if only this would happen, God, then I'd have more faith. If only this would happen, God, then I'd believe. And our, and our faith starts to get shaken. Doubt starts to creep in. Hope seems lost. And it seems like a hopeless situation. We're not sure. Right now, I want to encourage each and every one of you that right now, we are in the in-between. We are in the not yet time. It is not yet completed, not yet fulfilled. But just like the disciples had a day when Jesus came, Jesus is coming into our situation as well. I want to tell you about a story that happened back in... Back during World War II, it was the end of May, and the year was 1940, and World War II was just about a year old. And lots of things going on in World War II. Germany was moving across France and different parts of Europe, and there were several thousand troops at the time in northern France, and there was about over, there was over 350,000 troops. And all of these troops were from England, from Belgium, from different European countries who were fighting against the Germans. And the Germans were winning the war. And all of these soldiers retreated to a city in northern France called Dunkirk. Some of you may have seen the movie of a couple years ago by that name. The, the name of the movie is Dunkirk. And what happened during that time is Dunkirk was in, is in the northern part of France, right along the coast. So it's right along, uh, right along the coast there in northern France. Across the channel from France was Great Britain. And so all of the troops were, were in that one city, in the city of Dunkirk, but they were completely surrounded by the Germans. So they couldn't escape. The only way that they could escape was to get out by a boat or something like that. And the Germans thought they had won the war. It was like, we'll just go in, we'll just take, take the city, and uh, it'll, that'll be the end of it. But what ended up happening was over the course of about four or five days, there were 800, they say there were 861 boats that came from England across the channel into France to Dunkirk to pick up soldiers, to rescue the soldiers and take them back to Great Britain, back to the UK. And some of them were military boats. Some of them were uh, just like fishing vessels or some of them were transport. Some of them were uh, other types of boats, but a lot of them were just some, just uh, a family who had just a little boat, just a little pleasure boat, and they would sail across, pick up a few soldiers, and then go back. And they would keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, to rescue as many of these soldiers as they could. And this went on for about four or five days. And they estimated that they were able to save 350,000 troops from all of those different countries on, that, on those few days. And it was a time when everybody, all the troops evacuated from England, or sorry, from France, and they were able to regroup in England, and later on they came back, and a number of years later they ended up winning the war. And so, just kind of like the disciples, there was a time when it was the in-between. It looked hopeless, 
but there was a, a not yet. Their, their, their salvation, their, their rescuing was not yet. In Wales, a part of the UK called Wales, there was a man by the name of Rees Howells. And he had a Bible college in Wales. You can actually still go to that Bible college today because there's that Bible college is still going. But Rees Howells was a, a prayer warrior. He was an intercessor. And he taught his students how to pray. And he said, during this war, we are going to pray. And we're going to give ourselves to prayer. We're going to give ourselves to seeking God. We're going to give ourselves to praying and seeing something happen. And during this whole time, during the evacuation of Dunkirk, there were people praying and praying and praying and praying. What happened in Dunkirk was a miracle. It was a miracle what happened. All those people were able to be evacuated. The Germans didn't destroy all of the troops. They could have easily overrun the city, but they didn't. But there was prayer that was happening. There was prayer that was going on during those times. And so it was a miracle. It was a miracle during World War II. Now, if you hear the stories, they probably wouldn't tell you too much about the prayer that happened at the Bible College with Rees Howells. But that doesn't mean that that prayer was not effective. And I wonder, I wonder in our situation or the situation that you are in today, maybe your situation has nothing to do with COVID-19 or the virus that's happening. Maybe you have a different situation. Maybe it's health problems. Maybe it's financial. And you have not gotten to the answer yet. I want to encourage you. Pray. Do two things. First is to pray. What would happen? What would happen if we all gave ourselves to prayer during this in-between time? And we just said, God, we want to see a miracle. We want to see a miracle take place. We want to see a difference made. We want to see the situation changed. Do you believe? Do you believe in the power of prayer? Do you believe that there is an answer? Do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Do you believe that the word was spoken? Do you believe that there is a change that is coming? We as Christians, we're not meant to just sit and watch things happen and worry and fear and doubt. That's not what God has called us to as Christians. Let's be people of faith. You say, my God can. My God can is stronger than a virus. My God is stronger than financial problems. My God provides. My God, my God is stronger than the grave. My God is stronger than sin. Let's be people who rise up and say, this is the day. This is the day. This is the day. I believe God wants to use each and every one of you as light in the darkness. As light in the darkness. Light and darkness, if you compare the two, they're different. Light always has victory over darkness. If you have light in a dark room, the darkness has to go. I believe God wants to use each and every one of us. God wants to fill you with hope. God wants to fill you with faith. God wants to fill you with life. Not despair, but hope. The other thing that you can do during this time is to hang on to Jesus. Hang on to Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus has victory over the grave. That's what we're celebrating today. 
And the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in us. When you feel hopeless, say, Jesus, I need you. Because the truth is, we read it at the beginning, Isaiah 53, Jesus knows the ups and downs of our lives. He was despised. He was rejected by men. He was acquainted with sorrows. He knows what we're going through. And he's still by our side. So during the times when you feel hopeless, hang on to Jesus. Endure whatever it is that you're enduring, but endure it with Jesus. Say, Jesus, come on, we're in this together. Come on, we're doing this together. I'm going to hang on to you. I'm going to be close to you. I'm going to be with you because I know that you're with me. You said that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. So Jesus, through it all, I'm going to be close to you. Every day, Jesus, you're with me. And you know what? During the times of hopelessness, as you draw close to God, he's going to draw close to you and your life is going to be changed. When you come out from this hopeless situation, you're going to be a different person. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be closer to the Lord. You're going to be more full of faith because you're going to see the answer. You're going to see the answer. And just like what happened with Jesus is a history-changing event. I believe that God is going to change your history as well. He's going to change you from the inside out. But I believe through prayer, God's going to use you. God's going to use your family. God's going to use New Life Fellowship as people who shine in the darkness, who have hope, who hang on and say, I know this is just the in-between times. And it might look dark, but I know that the answer is coming. It might not be today, it might not be yet, but I know, just like Jesus rose from the dead, we're going to rise in victory as well. Listen to the words of Jesus in John 16. Jesus answered them, Do you believe? Behold, the hour is coming when you will be scattered, each to his home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you that in you, in me, you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And the last words to Jesus, or sorry, the last words from Jesus are in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. As we shine for Jesus, we are testifying. We are witnesses to the darkness about who our Jesus is. The power of God is in you. The Spirit of God is in us. So let's let our light shine. Don't be fearful. Don't be doubtful. Don't be worried. Don't be afraid. God has put something within us. It's the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. And it's not just for us to make it through, but it's for us to be witnesses to those around us and to the entire world. This is a historic time. But it can be a historic time for the people of God to rise up and say, this is who my God is. Let's be people who embrace hope, embrace the Lord, embrace this opportunity that God has given us to be a light that shines in the darkness. Shine with hope. Shine with peace. Shine with love. Because God has put something great inside of us. And even though we might not see it yet, hang on to the promises. Hang on to the promises. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the price that you paid for us. And we thank you, Jesus, that you rose from the dead. 
that this hope is not an empty hope. It's not a dead hope, but it's a living hope. It's a hope that's alive and brings life to our souls, brings life to those around us. And the name of hope is Jesus Christ, Jesus our Lord. Jesus, today we remind ourselves of who you are and who, who we are in you. You lead us in victory. You lead us in resurrection. And our lives are no longer ours, but our lives belong to you. God, we just thank you so much. God, I pray for each one of us that we would have just, a, a, just an, an increase in hope, an increase in peace, an increase in joy, and just that positive outlook that says, yeah, my God's got this. My God's got this. God, I just pray. I just release peace. I release hope to each person who's watching and listening right now. I pray hope. I pray peace. I pray joy. God, I thank you that you are present with us each and every moment of every day. Thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your faithfulness to us. In the mighty name of Jesus, the resurrection name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you guys, everyone who's out there, if you have any prayer requests, please connect with us. Send us a personal message on Facebook or call our offices. We would love to get in contact with you. Uh, we would have someone pray for you over the phone if, uh, if we can't meet one-on-one. -on -one. But stay connected. If you're really going through a tough time, please connect connect with us because we really want to we really want to see each and every one of you uh, continue to grow continue to stay connected to continue to be encouraged and still full of faith during this time I know sometimes things can be lonely get in a small group uh, and I just want to encourage let's do our part to stay connected and uh, yeah let's just do it let's uh, stay connected and thank you guys so much for today. Thank you guys for joining with us. And we'll see you guys all again next week. God bless you guys.